So we'll first talk about dependence in chains and forks. Here we have a chain, and we know that x1 and x2 are dependent simply because of minimality or the causal edges assumption. Same with x2 and x3. But what about x1 and x3? x1 and x3 are also dependent, usually, and we'll depict this with this sort of flow of association or flow of information. And it flows from x1 through x2 to x3 or the other way around from x3 through x2 to x1. It's symmetric. And a reminder that when I say association, I just mean statistical dependence. Similarly, in forks, x1 and x2 are dependent from minimality or the causal edges assumption, and then the same with x2 and x3. And what about x1 and x3? It turns out that they are also associated. And it's because of this common cause x2 that they share. I'll be using causal terminology here, but everything that I say about association or statistical dependence applies just by the Markov assumption. I don't need the causal edges assumption. It just makes the in explanations more intuitive. So x1 and x3 are dependent here because they share this common cause. Whenever this common cause x2 changes, then it's going to cause x1 to change and x3 to change in a corresponding way. So in both chains and forks, x1 and x3 are dependent. Another way of talking about that is that association flows along these paths between x1 and x3, or x3 and x1. And we'll now talk about independence in chains and forks. So it turns out that if we were to condition on x2, then x1 and x3 become independent, conditional on x2. We depict this conditioning with a light gray shading of the variable x2 here in the chain graph. So you can think of conditioning on x2 in this chain as blocking this path from x1 to x3. And similarly, it's the same in forks. When you condition on x2, it blocks the path from x1 to x3. It makes x1 and x3 conditionally independent. Okay, so the term that I've been using here is blocked path, and that's a very important term that we'll be using throughout this course. Similarly, when a path is not blocked, so when we don't condition on x2 in these graphs, then we have an unblocked path. This is when association is free to flow between x1 and x3. So in a blocked path, association is not free to flow, it is blocked. All right, so that's all some nice visual intuition, but what about a proof? So the claim that we just made, which we're visually depicting here, is that x1 and x3 are independent conditioned on x2, which you can write this way in, in terms of this factorization. And that's what our goal will be in this proof, is to show this. So to do this proof, we start with the Bayesian network factorization. In order to write that down, we look at the graph, we see p of x1, and then p of x2 given its parent x1, and then p of x3 given its parent x2. That's what we've written down here in the Bayesian network factorization. Then we need to condition this whole thing on x2. So we can use Bayes' rule here, which just tells us to divide this by p of x2. And then if we notice that we already have one of the terms that we want to end up with, p of x3 given x2, then we can, then we know that we just need to turn this stuff in the red box down here in step two into the stuff in the red box up in our goal. That's how we can complete the proof. So if we just notice that in the numerator, we can combine those into a joint p of x1 comma x2, and then just apply Bayes' rule again. 
So we can turn this fraction into exactly what we want, p of x1 given x2. All right, so we just proved that x2 blocks the path from x1 to x3 in chains, right? We proved that x1 and x3 are conditionally independent given x2. And you can imagine doing the exact the same thing for forks instead of chain graphs. And feel free to do that yourself if you like. It's a similar process. Go ahead and pause the video now if you want to go through that proof.